Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with EVS 1000, ILS Localizer Mode. In this presentation, we'll show how to make measurements of ILS localizer signals using Rodian Schwartz EVS 1000 series analyzers. This presentation assumes a basic familiarity with ILS signals and Rodian Schwartz EVS 1000 series analyzers. If you're unfamiliar with either of these topics, or if you'd like to review, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding ILS and or Getting Started with the EVS 1000 General Overview before continuing with this presentation. ILS Localizer Analysis is enabled by Software Option K1 and provides a wide variety of measurements of localizer signals. These measurements include various modulation depth measurements, individual and combined measurements of course and clearance, various distortion and harmonics measurements, and information on the COMID signal. Measurement data can also be recorded for viewing on the EVS-1000 or can be exported for external analysis. To access ILS Localizer Analysis Mode on the EVS-G1000, simply press the Mode Hard key on the front of the instrument and select ILS Localizer. If operating the EVS over VNC, press M and then use the down arrow to scroll through the list of available analysis modes. The first step in ILS localizer analysis is entering the frequency or channel of the ILS localizer. This can be done either as the absolute frequency in megahertz or as an IKO channel number. Note that the EVS will automatically calculate and display the corresponding value. To change the frequency or channel on the EVSG, press the channel frequency hard key. In VNC mode, use the keyboard shortcut Q to enter either frequency or channel. The EVS also provides an easy way to switch between localizer and glide path modes. Pressing the ILS glide path key switches the EVS to glide path mode. The glide path frequency is automatically configured based on the paired localizer frequency. In this example, IKO channel number 32X corresponds to a localizer frequency of 109.5 MHz and a glide path frequency of 332.6 MHz. The ILS localizer key can then be used to switch back to localizer mode and revert back to the paired localizer frequency. On the EVS, ILS localizer measurements are divided into five different views. These are main, course and clearance, distortion, ID, and recording. We'll start by looking at the main analysis view. The main ILS localizer analysis view is divided into three sections. The level and frequency display, which provides information on the power and frequency of the received signal. The IF spectrum view, which shows power as a function of frequency. And the main numerical results, which can be configured to show various measurements and parameters of the received signal. As mentioned a moment ago, the level and frequency display shows the power and frequency of the input signal, with power shown as an absolute value in dBm and frequency as an offset in hertz from the nominal or configured localizer frequency. The bar graph shows the overload state. Green means no overload, yellow indicates an approaching overload, and red indicates that overload is occurring. Note that in course and clearance mode, separate bar graphs are displayed for each signal. If an overload condition does occur, different messages will appear depending on the type of overload. For example, here both RF and ADC overloads. Regardless of the cause of the overload, the solution is to reduce or attenuate the input level, and this can be done by setting RF attenuation to either normal or low distortion. Please see the EVS-1000 General Overview presentation for more details on configuring RF attenuation. The IF Spectrum Preview provides a plot of power versus frequency, similar to a spectrum analyzer display. The center of the display, or the zero frequency, is the nominal channel frequency, and the frequency range, or span, is set to the measured bandwidth. The EVS chooses a power range that will display both the peak and the noise simultaneously. The main application of the IF Spectrum Preview is verifying that the measurement settings are appropriate. For example, we can use the IF Spectrum to see if a localizer signal is present, or if there's noise or other types of interference 
in addition to the localizer signal. Although the EVS automatically chooses the frequency range or span based on the nav aid type, RF spectrum mode can be used to choose a larger span if needed. This is covered in a separate presentation. Note that if RF spectrum mode is chosen, the current settings, such as channel frequency, are transferred to that mode. The localizer numerical results view includes the difference of depth of modulation and the sum of depth of modulation for the 90 and 150 Hertz localizer signals. Green is used to indicate a value DDM signal, and DDM is also displayed in the form of a bar graph. The AM modulation depths and frequencies of the 90 and 150 Hertz lobes are also displayed, in addition to the phase angle between them. And finally, the three or four letter Morse identifier of the localizer is decoded and displayed as well. Many ILS systems consist of both a coarse and a clearance signal. A single receiver board in the EVS-1000 can detect, measure, and display coarse and clearance signals simultaneously. The way in which the EVS displays the measurement results depends on the channel configuration. That is, whether the EVS is configured to measure one or two frequencies. To configure channels, press Measure and then 1F2F, or use the VNC shortcuts M, F1. Here we define whether we're making a single frequency or a dual frequency measurement. 1F measures only at a single frequency, whereas 2F measures at two frequencies at the same time, and results are reported as the sum of both measurements. It's also possible to perform a dual frequency measurement where results are reported either for coarse or for clearance. And finally, there's a wide mode that measures over a wider bandwidth. This can be used to look at both single or dual frequency localizer signals. In coarse and clearance systems, each component is offset from the nominal localizer frequency. Auto-tune can be used to automatically determine the frequencies of each signal component in two-channel configurations. When enabled, Auto-Tune will go through three steps. It first searches for signal peaks that are within the measurement bandwidth. It then checks these peaks to see if they are ILS signals, and if so, it then locks onto these frequencies. The status of Auto-Tune for each carrier can be seen just below the frequency display. Auto-Tune will automatically attempt to find the carriers, but this process can be restarted by using Find Carrier. Signals must also be above the defined carrier threshold level in dB to be detected. And upper frequency specifies whether the higher frequency carrier is the coarse signal or the clearance signal. This can vary between standards and in different parts of the world. Auto-Tune for coarse and clearance is enabled by default, but it can be disabled by changing the coarse clearance carrier setting from auto to manual. In this case, the offsets for coarse and clearance must be manually specified. Here, the coarse signal is 10 kHz above, and the clearance signal is 5 kHz below the nominal localizer frequency. The localizer distortion view shows the distortion factors for the 90 and 150 Hz signal components. These include the AM modulation depth for each lobe, the harmonic distortion for the second, third, and fourth harmonics, and the total harmonic distortion, as well as any residual frequency modulation. The parameter AM90 plus 150 refers to the combined AM modulation depth of both lobes, taking into account the phase difference between them. Information about ident signal parameters can be seen in the ID analysis view. The time since the last received ID is shown, as well as the decoded Morse ID and the period or interval between the ID signals. The length and spacing of the dots and dashes in the Morse ID can be seen along with the modulation depth and frequency of the ID signal. This should normally be about 1020 Hz. The last view we'll look at is the recording view, which displays and stores ILS localizer measurement data in a tabular format. If GPS data is available, this data is also stored with the localizer measurement data. Please see the separate presentation 
getting started with the EVS-1000 data recording, for more details and step-by-step -step instructions on logging and exporting measured data. In this presentation, we've covered ILS Localizer Analysis Mode, which is enabled by Software Option K1. This option performs a wide range of measurements on localizer signals, including difference and sum of depth of modulation, modulation parameters on both the 90 and 150 Hz lobes, distortion measurements, and analysis of the localizer identification signal. These measurements can be performed for a coarse, clearance, or both, either individually or simultaneously. Additional displays of the received signal level and frequency, as well as a spectrum view, can be used to verify the presence of the localizer signal and or the presence of other signals or noise. All measurement data can be logged together with GPS time and position information. And finally, configuration of localizer analysis is very easy. Simply enter the ILS frequency, either in megahertz or as a standard IKO channel number, and specify the channel configuration. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with EVS-1000, ILS Localizer Mode. If you'd like to learn more about the EVS-1000 or other avionics-related topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.